So you're a cat dad. 100%. <laughs> How many cats do you have and who takes care of them when you're shooting the show? Oh, what a lovely question. <laughs> I. You weren't expecting this yes. one. My wife and I have two uh, little gatos, as we call them. Gotcha. The lady and the tiny. When we are away, actually, my best friend is watching them right now. But we will we find ways, and a lot of the times, my wife has to stay home and make sure they don't get into too much cat trouble. They're mischievous little kids. Definitely, yeah. especially at three thirty a.m. Normally, oh. that's the hour when the zoomies hit. Okay. <laughs> like destroy everything in the home, and then we put it back together in the morning. Are you as passionate about working on this show as you are about cats? I <laughs> definitely am. I'm a passionate dude. Um, no, I mean, like, I, I didn't even know that I loved cats as much as I do until we finally got one instead of a dog, less high maintenance. Yeah. But um, no, it's funny. It's actually, the show is a little bit the same. I auditioned for a short film that, that led into the show a year and a half later. Thankfully, did not get that part. It's the best part I never booked because then I was able to play Andrew and kind of went into this not knowing what I was getting into. And then I found like the most loving, amazing crew cast. It really is a big family. And we started, you know, from very grassroots and it's just gotten bigger and bigger and better and better. And I'm like so grateful to have found myself in this company. What makes it so loving? What do you believe is the difference between the cast and crew of Chosen and maybe another project that you've worked on? I think there's an open-mindedness in this cast and crew. There's this, this feeling of we're all here to tell this story the best way we possibly can, and everyone fits their part so well, all the way from the top, from Dallas, the director, down to, to, to anyone even coming in just for the day. We all know what it is that we're doing here in this show, and we're trying to tell the most authentic story of Jesus that we possibly can. And so to me, as an artist and actor, like what a gift to be a part of this and to try to figure out what it was like to live 2,000 years ago, giving your life to something and just walking that very difficult path that we do as disciples. It's it. It's, I think we all kind of know the responsibility that we have, and we all try to, to rise to the challenge. Rise, indeed. You know, a lot of times you see these projects about a historical character or about a religious character. The other people around him kind of fade into the background, but in this particular series, it seems as though the, the disciples, the apostles, are in such focus. Why do you believe it's important to tell the story with so much authenticity? I think because... Otherwise, it doesn't have the impact. Without the people around Jesus, without seeing what life would really be like then, you know, that's why we have dirt always. <laughs> We're always sweaty. We're, you know, bleeding, crying. It's, you really feel like, oh, what would it be like to live under Roman oppression, to not be able to pay your taxes, you're about to lose your family boat, you know, and then all of a sudden the Messiah arrives and you say, ah, oh, my entire world has flipped upside down. How can I give myself to this and, and know that, that, you know, I play a human being and you might feel the exact same. If it's like, oh, I have to live in a tent now for the next <laughs> few years. I have to see what it's like to live on four legumes a day and, and be chased out of town by religious leaders. It's a really challenging life. And without those people surrounding Jesus, a lot of the times the focus could just be at the very end of the story. But the end of the story only has the impact that it does because you see everything that leads there. What do you believe is the biggest misconception about The Chosen? The biggest misconception about The Chosen, I think people try to stay away maybe from stories like this because they think they'll be cheesy or they won't be handled with authenticity or groundedness. And we're the exact opposite of that. We are doing our best to be like, no, this is what it would be like. This is what it would feel like, you know, interpersonal relationships that you get on other television shows that people think, well, they definitely wouldn't have that on The Chosen. It's like, we're filled with that. That's mostly what it is. And then every once in a while you have, you know, a, a miracle from the Gospels or something like that. And again, those have that impact because you see us 
squabbling or fighting or yelling at each other or, you know, finally making up and hugging each other. You know, that all that stuff is built in, not just the marble statue version that's like, and now a Bible story. It's like doesn't feel like that at all. I would think as an actor, just like with me, every time I do a project, I learn something either about myself or about relationships or about the world or about who I want to be. Mm -hmm. What have you learned from this particular project at this stage of your life? I think, you know, it's funny coming into this project, I, I like to think of myself and one of the values that I hold highest is about being open-minded, truly open-minded. And um, I wasn't as open-minded before I got into this project. I, I come from outside of the Christian world. I'm Jewish, um, and I thought I was open-minded, and I was nervous coming onto this show. I didn't know what was going to be waiting for me. And the idea that everyone welcomed me with open arms, like that, I, I really was nervous, and then saw, oh, I have nothing to be afraid of. We're so supportive. And that really starts at the top. And when I look at the way that Dallas has led this show, I see an, an open-minded guy who's so just secure in himself and his beliefs and his worldview. And to me, it's like, I don't know that I would have met Dallas otherwise from being a part of the show. And I'm just so thankful that I get to be a part of it. And, and I am more open-minded for having done so. I was nervous that maybe being from outside of, of um, you know, a community of, yeah, of the church that, that maybe I wouldn't be accepted or I'd be looked down on and it couldn't be further from the truth. Like I have been welcomed, supported. I have felt like this environment is a place that we can do our best work always because it really is about telling this historical story as best we possibly can. And you need everyone to be doing their jobs as well as they can to do that. And so that's, yeah, it just, it, it, it showed me sort of my keeping people at, at arm's length that I just do not need to do that, you know? I just- Congratulations. I know it I feels mean, nice. What's not to love about you, Noah? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> this Sunday, watch The Chosen at 8, 7 central. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.